Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So you know that we moved into this apartment back in like late January and I have slowly taken my time in decorating the space. But yeah, so the living room is probably the closest room to actually being complete. Finally found the perfect coffee table and you guys saw that whole saga on my Insta story and the perfect rug. I've gone through like three rugs before I found the one that I actually liked. Things are coming along. Really the only thing I need to do in here is just like stylize the entertainment center and build an entryway. So as you can see, when you walk in, there's not really like an entryway. We just have an open wall, but I really love the look of an entryway. And I think that by adding like a cute little bench where you can kind of sit, put your shoes on, drop your bag off whenever you walk in, that would just be a really cute way to kind of warm up the room and stylize this empty wall space. So the first thing I need to do is just create my own bench and then we'll do some DIY wall decor, stylize the area, and just DIY this space on a budget. So let's get started with the bench, because we have a lot of sanding to do. So I went to Lowe's yesterday and I picked up, ah, whoa, this, I think it's a Douglas fur. It is two inches thick by 12 inches wide. And the shortest in length that it had was, was eight feet, but they will cut it down for you. So I had them cut it down to 42 inches in length because that's the measurement that I saw most of the benches online were between 40, 44 inches. I ordered these furniture legs off of Amazon, super easy. So the first thing we need to do is sand this thing down so we can stain it. And then all of your neighbors are gonna hate you because this tool is so loud. Using 100 grit sandpaper because the wonderful employee suggested not going over 120 because by doing that the stain might not penetrate. And then I'm just gonna take some sandpaper by hand and just kind of round out the corners so they're not as sharp, just like that little rounded look. I feel like I have more control when I'm actually hand sanding than with that crazy sander. First, I'm gonna start with this pre-stain by Varathane. It just helps seal the wood for an even color, works under any oil-based stain, and prevents blotchiness. So especially if you're using really soft and porous woods, they can be really splotchy or uneven in the color. So to help prevent this, we'll just use a nice wood conditioner. Apply until the wood is saturated on top, let it penetrate for two to five minutes, and then wipe the wood conditioner off in the direction of the wood. For this stain, I'm gonna be mixing these two stains. One is golden oak. This is like a nice yellowy warm undertone. And then the weathered oak, which is gonna also kind of be like a gray cooler undertone. The way that they mix, when you mix them together, it's just beautiful. So I'm gonna go in with golden oak first, and then the weathered oak. I hand sanded the legs with 120 grit sandpaper and then applied the stain. We are gonna let our stain dry for the night and in the meantime, we'll make some wall decor. So per Minwax instructions, we have to wait eight hours before we can seal. So we'll just deal with that tomorrow. But in the meantime, we are gonna make some wall decor, but we're still gonna keep this just very affordable. Some really affordable options are always Etsy. You can purchase the prints. They're like five, six, seven dollars. Sometimes they'll even come in a bundle of three and then just have them printed out at like Walgreens or FedEx, wherever your favorite printout place is. But if you're feeling kind of artsy and want to create something on your own, you can always just paint on canvas and have your own little artwork. I'm really into like the line art, just like the abstract lines and figures. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint one like that. Now I am not any kind of an artist, so I'm not gonna be like drawing anything exceptional. It's going to be line art. It's going to be very basic. It's going to be abstract. It's going to be simple. It might not even be good, but it's art. So I'm gonna have a great time. Um, so let's paint. So I ended up doing four because after the first one, I was like, oh no, that's awful. And uh, then I started getting progress. I found that the simpler 
the better. So maybe we're not all artists and we all shouldn't express ourselves through paint. This next one is kind of crazy. Um, I saw this on CB2's website. This is the photo. This is what I saw. And it is just so beautiful. And I'm like, art deco. It's just different. But it was $300. Um, also very large. I did not need that size. But I'm looking at it and I'm like, what is that? Like, is it stucco? Is it sheetrock? And then I was like, but you know what I have? Left over from filling all the holes in my previous apartment? Spackle. And I think that if I did spackle and just kind of like on a canvas, we pretty much have the same effect, right? So spackle art, here we go. All you will need for this is your spackle. I got this huge tub, it's like $6. You pr don't need this huge one, but I have a lot of holes in my apartment. Your spatulas, I have a three inch and a two inch, and then your canvas. You can actually purchase like those beautiful wrapped canvases at your local craft store like Joann's. I'm actually just gonna use some of the canvas paper that we painted on, and then I will lay it on top of my cardboard so it has like a strong backing before I put it into the frame. Because my canvas was not a square and I'm actually gonna put it into a square frame. I took the backing off of the frame and then took my X-Acto knife and cut the canvas accordingly so that I knew it was the correct size. And from there, it's pretty easy. Just take your spackle and globs and spread it around, applying different pressures in different areas. You can alternate between the different sizes, the two inch and the three inch. You really, you can't go wrong, you guys. Oh my gosh, look at that. It is like art. This is real art. I am gonna transfer this to a new piece of cardboard so that it doesn't dry and potentially stick onto this cardboard. It usually takes spackle like four to five hours to settle. And since we have like these really big clumps, I'm sure it's gonna take much longer. So we just really want this to dry and set. So give it a little bit of time. Frames. Frames are another thing that can be so expensive. Like when did this happen? But a little trick for you is to always check out like your local thrift store. I find frames all the time at the thrift store, Home Goods, Target, they have pretty affordable frames too. You can also look around your house. Maybe you have some old frames lying around that you don't need anymore, that you don't use anymore. You can always add like a coat of paint to them, kind of revive them. So I'm just going to spray paint these black because I feel like against the white wall would be like such a beautiful contrast. Spray paint our frames, give them a facelift, or you can buy new frames, but we're doing this cheap. Okay, so I will see you tomorrow. We will finish up the bench, seal it, add the legs, and the grand reveal. See you tomorrow. Hello, so it is time to add the legs to our bench top. I went ahead and I sealed it this morning because it takes two hours to dry. So basically this whole project is just a waiting game. So the legs and the table have been sealed. We now need to go sand it with our 220 grit paper. That's just gonna help make like a really smooth surface like butter, the nice smooth surface and then we'll add the legs. So I really like the look of that mid-century modern style where the legs are kind of tilted out at an angle. So I purchased these angled mounting bolts that will help just have that tilted look. For the hardware, I wanted the legs to be fairly flush with the end of the bench top. So I placed my brackets about three quarters of an inch in from the long edge, and then about three and a half inches in from the ends of the board. Then with a pencil, trace the holes so I knew exactly where to drill my pilot holes. I did not want to risk splitting the wood, so pilot holes first and then hardware. Then just twist in the legs and you're done. I love the all around simplicity of this bench. It's simple to make and it's just a simple, sleek style. The 
<laughs> hey. Does it wobble? No. She's sturdy as a rock. That's good. I'm surprised. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> One last thing when you're decorating on a budget, repurposing and reusing objects you already have is key. So I scrounged up some items like like this bowl is from my kitchen, um, a coaster, but items like vases, bowls, pillows, and rugs, they can just really pull together a space. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that maybe you got some inspo. Let me know if you try and recreate the bench or some artwork, but thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fabulous day, darling, and I will see you later. Bye.